U.S. President Joe Biden has said that if he were the Wagner mercenary group chief, he'd be careful with what he ate. He said, and I quote, I'd be keeping an eye on my menu. <clears throat> Biden made the statement in Helsinki ahead of a summit with the leaders of Finland, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland and Norway. A former U.S. military leader earlier suggested that Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin has probably been murdered or he's in prison. This comes after Prigozhin led a failed rebellion against Russian President Vladimir Putin's regime. Ukraine has received cluster bombs from the United States. These munitions are banned in more than 100 countries. Ukraine has pledged that it will only use them to dislodge concentrations of enemy soldiers. This step has not gone down well with Russia. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu has warned that the country could resort to deploying similar weaponry if Ukraine uses the cluster munitions. Canada has unfrozen talks with Turkey on lifting export controls on drone parts. This comes after Ankara said it will support Sweden's NATO membership bid. Canada suspended the export of some drone technology to Turkey in 2020. This happened after Canada realized that its equipment had been used by Azerbaijan's forces fighting with Armenian troops over the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region. A U.S. special counsel has urged the federal judge who's dealing with former U.S. President Donald Trump's classified documents case to deny his request to delay the trial. Trump wants to delay the trial until after the 2024 presidential election. Trump is one of the frontrunners for the 2024 Republican Party presidential nomination. He's been accused of unlawfully keeping classified documents when he left office in 2021. However, Trump has pleaded not guilty to these charges. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi is on an official trip to France. He's been conferred with France's highest civilian award by President Emmanuel Macron. It's called the Grand Cross of the Legion of Honour. Modi is the first Indian Prime Minister to receive this award. He's also the guest of honour in Bastille Day celebrations in Paris. The Indian Space Research Organisation has successfully launched the Chandrayaan-3 moon mission. It lifted off from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota, located in the Indian state of Andhra Pradesh. 16 minutes after the launch, the propulsion module successfully separated from the rocket. It will orbit Earth about five to six times before it moves towards the lunar orbit. South Korea has announced new sanctions on North Korea. The sanctions will affect four North Korean individuals and three entities involved in the country's missile development program. This comes after North Korea tested a new ballistic missile. This was North Korea's 12th missile launch this year. South Korea and international bodies like the United Nations have sanctioned North Korea several times. However, Pyongyang has always moved forward with its missile development program. The International Criminal Court has launched an investigation into increasing violence in Sudan's Darfur region. The reports of killings, rapes, arson, displacement and crimes affecting children are under investigation. The conflict between the Sudanese army and Rapid Support Forces paramilitary group broke out in April. Since the conflict escalated, more than 3 million people have been displaced. Last week, the UN said that Sudan is on the brink of a full-scale civil war that could destabilize the region. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi visited the southern African nation of Zimbabwe. The two countries have signed 12 memorandums of understanding. These agreements include plans to create a tractor manufacturing plant. It also includes pacts for cooperation in energy, agriculture, pharmaceuticals and telecommunications. With this, RICE's three-nation Africa tour has concluded. The city of Karachi in Pakistan has been ranked among the five least livable cities in the world. The Economic Intelligence Unit's Global Livability Index 2023 has ranked Karachi 169th out of 173 cities. 
Only Lagos, Algiers, Tripoli and Damascus are ranked lower than Karachi. The index focused on factors like post-pandemic recovery, cost of living, healthcare, education and infrastructure while ranking cities. In climate news, residents of a suburb in Canada's Ottawa saw a rare tornado spinning past homes in the community. They saw debris being tossed and roofs being ripped off homes. No deaths were reported, but nearly 2,000 residents were left without power. Meanwhile, in the Canadian city of Montreal, officials say that at least one tornado touched down in the city. Thick storm clouds swept over buildings accompanied by streaks of lightning and the loud rumbling of thunder. However, there were no reports of injury or death in Montreal either. New footage showed floods around the iconic Red Fort in India's capital city, New Delhi. People were seen wading through the flooded streets as vehicles remained submerged in water. This is after record rainfall swelled water levels in the Yamuna River, which runs through the city. The Yamuna River has already breached the danger mark and submerged a few adjoining areas in the city. Heavy rain lashed parts of northern China and that triggered multiple floods in triggered floods in multiple provinces. The roads were covered in flood water, which prompted immediate evacuations. Footage shows severe flooding in parts of China's Shanxi province. Authorities have initiated the Level 4 emergency response. It's the lowest of the country's four-tier flood control system. A leading climate scientist believes Europe will face hotter and hotter summers. A heatwave has been moving across parts of southern Europe and Africa. The region is further expected to experience record-breaking temperatures in the next few days. Flames and thick smoke rose above scorched houses and burned cars after a wildfire broke out in the European country of Croatia. At least one village burned and several others have been threatened as temperatures continue to soar in the country. Temperatures are expected to stay around 40 degrees Celsius across the region into next week. A powerful storm pummeled southern Brazil. It flooded roads and homes, leaving at least one dead. Some cities in the northwest of the Rio Grande do Sul region declared a state of emergency. Many residents in affected areas have taken shelter in sports facilities in their towns. The authorities have warned about the risk of landslides in several areas. Meanwhile, residents in the northwest of Mexico avoided stepping out amid scorching heat. The region is toiling under soaring temperatures. This week, the mercury reached 51 degrees Celsius. Local government and volunteers offered homeless people shelter, water and oral rehydration salt packets to avoid heat strokes. Climate change experts believe New York, Chicago and other US cities might be engulfed in smoke again soon. This is because of Canada, of the Canada fires that are expected to burn through the summer and into the fall. Experts believe that extreme events are going to become more frequent and perhaps more intense. They say that failing to take any action now could result in global temperatures increasing further. US climate envoy John Kerry has said that America will not pay reparations to developing countries hit by climate disasters. This was during Kerry's testimony at a hearing on the State Department's climate agenda. Last year, America had backed the creation of a funding mechanism to address the damages incurred by vulnerable countries due to climate disasters. But the deal did not spell out who would pay into the fund or how money would be disbursed. In business news, Britain's economy contracted less than expected in May. This was despite strikes and an extra uh, bank holidays for the coronation of King Charles. 
Data showed that the country's economic output fell by 0.1 percent. The fall was lower than what analysts had expected. The International Monetary Fund has said that its bailout to Pakistan was an immediate effort for quick policy implementation. An IMF official said that the program will provide the country enough time to implement necessary policies. Yesterday, Pakistan received $1.2 billion from the fund as the first tranche of the $3 billion bailout. Remote work will likely wipe off $800 billion from the value of office buildings by 2030. This is according to a study conducted by the financial firm McKinsey. It showed that the demand for office space would be 13% lower in 2030 than it was in pre-pandemic 2019. The Aust National Australia Bank has reached a deal with a union to let employees work from home. This is one of the first deals in the world to give legal protection for remote work. As part of the agreement, the company will also raise pay for its employees by 80%. Australia has appointed the first female head of its central bank. Australian Treasurer Jim Chalmers and Prime Minister Anthony Albanese announced Michelle Bullock as the new head of the Reserve Bank of Australia. She will serve in the position for at least the next seven years. The central bank's current governor, Philip Lowe, will leave on September 17th. This will mark an end to his 43-year career at the bank. The founder and former CEO of bankrupt cryptocurrency lender Celsius Network has pleaded not guilty to U.S. fraud charges. Alex Mashinsky has been uh, accused of artificially inflating the value of his company's pro proprietary crypto asset and misleading customers. Mashinsky was charged with seven criminal counts including securities fraud, commodities fraud and wire fraud. The Indian Finance Ministry is not considering any tax waivers for U.S. automaker Tesla. Yesterday, reports said that the automaker is in talks with Indian government officials to set up a factory in the country. It was also reportedly seeking incentives and tax benefits. Last month, Tesla CEO Elon Musk met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi during his state visit to the U.S. After this, Musk had announced that the U.S. car maker would soon make an investment in the country. Share prices of Google's parent company Alphabet rose nearly 5% on Thursday. This was after it rolled out its artificial intelligence chatbot Bard in Europe and Brazil. Bard's launch in the European Union was earlier paused by local regulators over privacy concerns. However, Alphabet says that it has spoken to the officials to reassure them. The U.S. antitrust regulator has opened an investigation into ChatGPT maker OpenAI. The Federal Trade Commission has accused the company of going against consumer protection laws. It's probing if uh, OpenAI engaged in unfair practices that harmed customer reputation and put their data at risk. This is the strongest regulatory threat so far to the Microsoft-backed AI startup. Twitter has filed a lawsuit against four unnamed entities in the U.S. state of Texas. The complaint alleged that the entities indulged in unlawful data scraping. According to the lawsuit, the social media company is seeking monetary relief of more than $1 million. Earlier this month, Twitter imposed reading limits for its users, citing data scraping and system manipulation on its platform. In sports news, the ICC has announced equal prize money for men's and women's teams at its global cricket events. As per the cricketing body, the move is a bid to bring in pay parity, ushering in a new era in world cricket. According to ICC chair Greg Barclay, this decision is a significant moment in the history of cricket. 
The International Cricket Council is looking to implement this decision by 2030. India's premier off-spinner Ravichandran Ashwin has become the third Indian bowler to claim 700 wickets in international cricket. Ashwin has achieved this feat against West Indies on day one of the first test in Dominica. Former India head coach Anil Kumble is on top of the chart with 956 international wickets. Off-spinner Harbhajan Singh is, on, is at second spot with 711 wickets in international cricket. Chennai Super Kings backed Texas Super Kings are set to host the Los Angeles Knight Riders in Major League Cricket's first game in the US. Investors have already said that they'll pour $120 million into the nascent, nascent US Cricket League. India's Vicom 18 is broadcasting the games which will end on July 30th. The sport has been steadily growing in popularity in the US for years, especially in places with large South Asian populations. In football, Saudi Pro League club Al Ettefaq are waiting on Jordan Henderson to give them the green light to make a formal offer to Liverpool. The Steven Gerrard managed side have proposed more than tripling Henderson's over $200,000 a week salary. A two-year contract has been mooted, which includes the option of a third year. Al Ettefaq are ready to bid whatever transfer fee is necessary to secure Henderson who has two years left on his current deal. Everton midfielder Deli Ali has revealed that he was sexually abused at the age of six. This was during an interview. The 27-year-old also explained how he attended a rehab for six weeks earlier this year. After winning the last of his 37 England caps in 2019, Ali fell out of favour at Tottenham Hotspur, which prompted a transfer to Everton. He has since struggled to make an impact, spending last season on loan at Turkish side Besiktas. Juventus have initiated the procedure to pull out of the European Super League project. Juventus said they had started a discussion on their exit with Real Madrid and Barcelona, the other clubs remaining in the project. That exit would be completed and effective only if authorised by Real Madrid and Barcelona. The Breakaway Super League was formed in April 2021. FIFA said it will offer 20,000 free tickets for the Women's World Cup for the matches held in Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington and Dunedin. This comes amid concerns about the slow pace of ticket sales in New Zealand. Sarai Behrman, a chief women's football officer for FIFA, said due to the sport's low prominence in the country, it's difficult to attract the fans to stadiums. In tennis, Ukraine's Lyudmila Kichenok, along with Croatian partner Mate Pavic, won the mixed doubles title at Wimbledon. They beat Belgium's Yogan Flihen and China's Zhu Yifan to lift the trophy. Pavic is a six-time Grand Slam champion and this is Kichinok's first major title in any tournament. In athletics, India's Abhishek Paul won bronze at the Asian Athletics Championships in Thailand. He grabbed a podium spot in the men's 10,000-meter event. This is his first medal at a major competition. Paul's next event is the 5,000 meter race that will take place on Sunday. The 28 year old gymnast Gabby Douglas returns to training ahead of the Paris 2024 Olympics. The th three time Olympic gold medalist from the US took to her Instagram page to announce her comeback. She last participated in the 2016 Rio Games and was on a break to focus on her mental health. Douglas is the first black woman to win the Olympic all-round gymnastics title. Moving to entertainment news now, leaders of Hollywood's Actors Union voted to join screenwriters striking to demand higher pay. This is the first time since 1960 that the two major Hollywood unions are striking at the same time. The last time this happened, Ronald Reagan was the Actors Guild president. 
The strike has affected production across the entertainment industry. It comes after a new contract with studios and streaming services broke down. Disney CEO Robert Iger has said that Hollywood writers are not being realistic with their demands and expectations. Iger said, and I quote, We have talked about disruptive forces on this business like recovery from COVID. This is the worst time in the world to add to that disruption. He added that the strike will have a very damaging effect on the entertainment business and there's, a, there's huge collateral damage. The cast of Oppenheimer made their final push to promote the film at the red carpet in London. The movie has been directed by Christopher Nolan. It takes audiences back to the time when an American physicist, Robert Oppenheimer, oversaw the creation of the atomic bomb during the Second World War. The list of top nominees for the annual Primetime Emmy Awards was recently announced by the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. The contenders for Best Drama Series include Succession, The Last of Us and The Crown. Wednesday, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and Ted Lasso are some of the nominees for Best Comedy Series. Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah have been nominated in Outstanding Talk Series category. Media personality Robert Kardashian has made a subtle return to the show The Kardashians. In a new episode, Rob could be heard on the phone with his sister Khloe Kardashian. The two were planning Rob's daughter Dream's sixth birthday party. Rob Kardashian had stepped away from his family's reality TV show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians. This was After facing ups and downs in his private life, Rob Kardashian chose to step away from the limelight. Actor Kevin Costner has accused his former wife, Christine Baumgartner, of robbing him blind before their split. New court documents allegedly claim that, according to Costner, Baumgartner purchased personal items and withdrew cash used in credit cards from his household staff. The claims have come to light over two months after Baumgartner filed for a divorce. Sex and the City actor Kristen Davis has revealed why she does not relate to the character Charlotte York that she played in the hit show. Davis said, and I quote, I'm not married, I have never been married, it's not my thing, I never focused on it. In the show, the character played by Davis, Charlotte, was married twice and had a traditional and polite personality. Actor Helen Mirren has said that she has been inspired by the widespread protests happening in Israel against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mirren played the role of former Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir in her movie Golda. The 77-year-old actor visited Jerusalem and made the statement during the Jerusalem Film Festival. Late legendary singer Elvis Presley's daughter, Lisa Mary Presley, died due to a small bowel obstruction. This was a delayed consequence of weight loss surgery. This information has been revealed almost six months after Mary Presley's death. In January, she was taken to a hospital after a reported cardiac arrest. Actor Robert, actor Robert De Niro's girlfriend Tiffany Chen has revealed that she has been diagnosed with Bell's palsy. Chen said that she developed Bell's palsy after giving birth to her daughter. It's a condition that causes sudden weakness in the muscles on one side of the face. 64-year-old Chen and 79-year-old De Niro met in 2015 on the set of the movie The Intern. They started dating several years later.